is Zachary Claggett, uh, known as Big Beef, and I am the co-director and co-writer and main cinematographer for the film Grief. My name is Zachary Lamb, and I am the writer and also co-director for Grief, and I also act in it. The inspiration for it was, well, I just had the first semester of college, and you know, you know, being a down person in college and stuff, it kind of like just built up with it. And I dealt with like a loss in the family. It made me kind of wonder how exactly I could turn that into necessarily like a film to help people understand or furthermore understand how grieving actually is for some people. With Unaware Affection, that was the first film that I'd worked on. It was a buddy of mine, uh, his idea, and I just kind of wrote the script out of that concept. And I was like, I actually want to make my own script out of something that I wanted to create and, you know, incorporate like my type of style with writing. And with that, I'd finished it probably in August of uh, 2021. And by the time I completely finished it, we had gone over it with a few people. And then that's when I had met Zachary Lamb about it. We worked together, me and Zachary Clauget, were together on a short film last semester during MSU's TV club, where I wrote that script pretty heavily. So taking the role of director this time around with Zachary Clauget uh, has really just opened my eyes to, to how that sort of thinking works and understanding the, the camera work that goes into creating a short film. Um, but it's definitely been interesting to be able to communicate with actors uh, how to set up a scene, which is something that I haven't had the chance to do. Um, I've normally been the actor, but now being on the other end is kind of cool. Cypher FM that we worked on last yeah, so made in two weeks. Oh yeah, we did it in two weeks. Script in one week, filming the next. Yeah, but and, this, this you know, film. editing as well. But this film, we've had almost a year to technically completely finish with writing and then going into production, we are spending a month in production. The cooperation style with Land here, honestly, I think it's really well. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's more of a natural and healthy way to go about it, just because you have a person that kind of has like a concept, and he did a really good job at imagining what I wanted. So we had basically the same like idea going about for a good handful of it. And with two people trying to explain it to the cast and crew is honestly easier than me, who is who struggles often uh, with explaining and talking to people about those things. Since you know Zachary Lamb has worked on not necessarily other films besides Cypher FM, but been around different plays and settings, and you know seeing how those directors would direct him and stuff, kind of he had a good concept and idea on how that would normally go about. And with me, you know, I'm just doing it by myself without seeing how directors would normally do it. Definitely, I think me and Zach have a really yin and yang type style where he's really great at some things that I'm not particularly amazing at and I'm really good at some things that he may struggle a bit with. Like, I couldn't tell you the first thing about cameras, but I do know actors and I do know a good little bit about writing. Um, so being able to have the same idea that we both know and then be able to communicate that has been really great because Zach will describe all these amazing shots and then I'll turn around and say to the actors, this is what you need to do. Just stand here, we'll have the camera over here, just do your thing. I think it's funny because I'll over explain something. I'll, I'll be like, we're gonna do this shot just because of this, 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 and it's gonna look like this, and this is how it's gonna be. And also, this is how you're gonna stand. It's gonna be like that. And the actors will look at me like, and <laughs> Zachary Lim will come and just be like, just stand there and do your thing. And I'm just like, yeah, exactly, precisely, he knows. Working with more professional actors and, you know, having much better equipment than what I have had in previous films is definitely really helpful. I will say that, you know, having a crew, because I mean, with oh, when I made Unaware Affection, Unaware Affection was just me running a camera and just guiding people around. And that was, I will admit, that was really hard to do. And it took me about six months to make completely. And then with Cypher FM, we had a crew, just not, as well as actors, you know, most of us were in the TV department and our skill set is mainly with cameras and not, you know, looking at a camera and speaking properly. Being able to act in it, um, it takes a, a separate feeling. As a sole actor, you know, you get very into a role and you sort of become it. Um, but now that I'm having to switch hats so much, it feels more like I'm able to also show that I'm a part of the film in a very physical and on-camera way rather than just the credits. So it's really nice to be able to get up there, live out what I just wrote, 
And then also it's really great to stand back and see what other people are doing with the stuff that me and Zach have made. So my name is Leah Harley and my involvement with grief is I played the female lead of Elizabeth. Kind of my method is I just kind of find like parts and pieces of myself like within the character and so she just seemed very just like lighthearted and fun and bubbly um, which are all pretty similar like characteristics that I would you know define myself as. The director, Zach, I hadn't met him before, but he emailed me and just said that he had seen me in like a previous short film that I had done and basically just offered me the role of Elizabeth. And so it was like really honored and like really cool to know that like other people had like seen the, the previous work that I had done and were interested in me because of it. My name is Alec Wadley and I am playing the lead, Jason. I think Jason is obviously a very troubled man uh, and he's also, from the way I've been playing him, I've been playing him a little stubborn because uh, obviously he's going to all these things and he's kind of just refusing to try and get better just to the fact it's like, oh, it's this, I don't want to forget. I'd say the way I channeled the character is just, I made sure to look at other portrayals of characters that I think would be similar to Jason. Such as, I'd probably say uh, Jake Gyllenhaal's character from Nightcrawler, he goes through a lot of intense uh, emotions during the course of the film. And so yeah, just com uh, pulling him from outside sources just really helped me get into the mindset of just like uh, a very depressed uh, man who's basically just, who sees that he has lost all point of his life. Because this is my first time working on a film, so uh, I've, do I've done most of my work on the theater level. So uh, one of the first things I had to find was I, I noticed I was using my theater voice a lot, propelling across the room. But obviously you don't need to do that with film because boom mics and all that. My name is Max Lack and I am playing the role of the therapist in grief. Typically, it really just took place all in one day and just the whole process was fun. Just like <laughs> the outside stuff of it, just like the conversations we had off camera and like the times and the, the, the laughs that we shared and just this like short time that we've been together. I haven't been around much to record, but just knowing that you're, you're, you're feeling comfortable enough and feeling safe enough to like really be vulnerable in front of the production team. I've always kind of been interested in the idea of psychology anyways. I've been considering changing my minor to it. Um, and I have been influenced by a lot of therapists in my lifetime as I have undergone many therapy sessions uh, growing up. And so I kind of just took everything that I've seen and I've learned to kind of captivate the role of the therapist for grief. In my opinion, when there are more actors around, there's definitely a, a more positive feeling in the atmosphere. Yeah, like, we filmed uh, scene 14 not too long ago, which is the bonfire scene. And that was just a really good night for a lot of people. Um, yeah. It was a bit it was a bit rocky to start with some of the yeah. production and getting that fire going. But once we got people into like the zone, it was good. And seeing that then translate to on screen, seeing the preview, that was just amazing and it gives me so much hope and excitement for the rest of the project. So really I've just been so excited to work with everybody from production to actors to Zach, you know, it's been an absolute blast collaborating with everybody. Everybody's energy has been almost 110% of, you know, having pure excitement to see the actual film when it's completely finished. And like I, like you said in the scene with 14 friends when we were when everyone was just all around the bonfire and having a good time, it was really fun. Even though a lot of people were choking on the smoke from the fire, that was pretty funny. Uh, no, it's not funny. They could die, <laughs> but still, um, it wasn't funny for them. But, no, it, but it was funny for them. It's a funny much. memory. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, we were working on weekends, you know, giving up our weekends to work on this project and stuff too. And so we'd all like carpool and travel to location to location. And so it's just really fun just getting to know everyone and coming together for the same purpose. Like everyone has their skills and they're just bringing them together um, to make a really fun, awesome project. They knew what they wanted for each shot. 
They made sure to tell me and the other actors exactly really what they wanted, what they wanted me doing, what they wanted me feeling for each scene. So it was really nice just to have that kind of direction. With most films, you don't really see that. Like, you can watch behind the scenes, of course, but you don't really understand what's going on until you actually seen what is going on behind the camera. What I want people to take away from grief is definitely how some people would react in those situations to kind of get an idea on how some people should also deal with people who are grieving, to know exactly what to do, or just have like a good concept on how to, you know, kind of give people hope and help them out with the harsh and sad times. When people come to see grief, you know, I want them to watch it, I want them to take it all in, but at the end, I want them to realize that they're watching a very human range of emotions, that this is all stuff that other people go through. So that way when they see it, they can have a better understanding and perhaps the concept isn't so foreign if they see it in, in their own lives. Grief to me is a very hard word to define because grief is almost undefinable. Ironically enough, I'm a psychology major, so I was, you know, slightly aware of the different stages of grief that are shown throughout the uh, course of the film. But, you know, we all grieve at some point in time, whether it's grieving the loss of a loved one, as seen in the film, or you can grieve the loss of time. Um, you can grieve, like, literally anything. You never know when it might be your last day. You never know when the people that you love, it might be their last day. So I think it's a really sweet story and I think people can take away of just maybe appreciating the people that they have in their lives just a little bit more. Grief, as we know it, uh, is extremely complicated. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think grief to me lets me know that I'm still living and that at least I'm lucky enough to be able to feel. I hope that this short film can help someone like Jason uh, or like myself because there are a lot of ways I can relate to Jason. And so I hope that when people see this, they allow themselves to be vulnerable. They allow themselves to have open conversations about their life, about their, their mental health, about any issues that they might have going on that they were too scared to talk about otherwise. I hope that this um, pushes people to really take that step towards helping themselves emotionally if needed.